Hey guys, Miguel Gomez here with Low Tech, and today I'm super excited to announce that I was chosen for the OnePlus Nord beta program here in the United States, and look what just arrived. So let's get it open. Alright guys, so this is the OnePlus Nord. This is what they shipped to me at least. Let's see what's in it. Oh, yeah, definitely not retail packaging. Oh, that is though. So here's the box the Nord comes in. I believe this is retail packaging uh, over in Europe and Asia. And the Nord isn't originally stated to come to the United States, but that's why they're holding this beta program for anyone in North America, uh, US and Canada to see how our how we take to it and how uh, it works over on this side of the world. Really nice clean packaging. Oof. I like the teal. <laughs> I really like the teal. This way Nord. Oh, it's heavy. Well, that's a lot of paperwork. Welcome letter. If everything just works the way we expect, do specs really matter? Let's find out, actually. What else is in this little top compartment? Oh, comes with a case, so you don't ruin it. Don't know if that's because it's the beta program or just because uh, it just they just come with all with them all. It would be nice if it is something that ships with the production models if it ever does come to the United States. Nice. So it comes with OnePlus stickers, clear that. Oh, I like those. I will be putting a SIM in this and running it as my daily driver for a few weeks until uh, we have to post the reviews and just learn as much as I can about it and try everything out. I will also be running the case, so the B-roll later on doesn't look like absolute trash. And it does come with a warp charger. Take note, Apple. So these warp chargers, uh, yeah, they output at to 6 amps, which should charge the phone in like half an hour, which is insane. And the classic red OnePlus cable. Nothing too exciting, but definitely a lot more accessories for around $400 phone. That's good to see. Whew, I'm actually nervous. <laughs> wow. What a big phone. I love the color. I love this teal. They call it blue marble and it just looks awesome. Like just truly, truly, really good. No headphone jack, USB-C, one speaker down here. Hopefully they use the second, the earpiece for amplification. It has four cameras. It has the main shooter, a telephoto, uh, an ultra wide, and a macro. We'll all be taking that, a look at that soon. Alright guys, so these are my first impressions of the OnePlus Nord. I've used it for about a day now and I am really, really happy with it. I did have some issues with it, with the Verizon SIM card. It was connecting to data and phone, but not messages. I couldn't receive any messages. So I went out, bought an AT&T SIM card and it's been working quite well ever since then. I did have some connection issues, but we'll talk about those in my review, so stay tuned for that. One of my favorite things about the OnePlus so far is the screen. It's a 6.4 inch AMOLED fluid display, which means it has a 90 hertz refresh rate and everything just looks super smooth. The resolution is high enough so you don't see any pixels and it gets really, really bright actually. So like outside in the middle of summer here in Arizona, you can just see everything super easily and it's bright enough it doesn't get like washed away with the sun so really good marks for that like you wouldn't think the screen belongs on a 400 dollar phone another thing that surprised me is the snapdragon 765 actually works really well the only other comparison i have to this is a snapdragon 855 from last year in my samsung s10e 
And this honestly feels very similar. It does lag behind with more intensive apps uh, like navigation or games, but for the most part, the experience is super smooth, really, really good actually. And like, I don't really miss the more power from the Snapdragon 855. So I also tried out the camera in a little bit of situations. I did an indoor shot and a few outdoor shots and here's how they look. I think the camera's actually really good for the price. The only thing with the cameras is the macro just kind of looks a bit soft. There's nothing too, too special about it. It's more of a gimmick and like a buying point than like a real feature to me. So that's just something I thought about. And the selfie cameras are actually pretty good too. But I noticed in Snapchat, they get really blurry. It's like they're not auto focusing. So you can hold the phone right there in the camera app. It looks great but when you open snapchat it just looks really blurry so there's definitely some optimization and that's probably on the snapchat side of uh the drivers and stuff for the camera but apart from that it looks really good and again for a 400 dollars phone you don't really see much of a difference between that and a 600 dollars phone which is the s10e so here are two pretty similar fixtures one this one i took with the oneplus nord and this one I took with the S10e. And as you can see, they're not too, too far apart in terms of quality. The Samsung is a tad sharper and definitely a bit more saturated, but that's just Samsung colors. The OnePlus looks really, really good as well. It's just a, a bit less saturated and a bit less detail overall. Another thing I really enjoyed about the OnePlus Nord so far is the fingerprint sensor in the screen. I'm used to the fingerprint sensor on the side of the phone and honestly, in the screen, just feels a lot more natural to use than you. Um, the only thing is, it is a little bit slower than a normal fingerprint button, but honestly, like, you get used to it, you just hold it for a couple milliseconds longer and it unlocks pretty quickly. So another thing that bothered me right off the bat is the single firing speaker. I'd love to see the earpiece amplified. Maybe they can do it in software unless it's they physically require a stronger headpiece, uh, earpiece. But yeah. <sighs> There's like no stereo separation and it makes it feel a generation or two old now. Another thing that surprised me is the build of the phone. It is a $400 phone that's glass and plastic. And compared to my Samsung S10e or even to an iPhone 10, you don't really notice that the sides are plastic until like it's you haven't been using it for a while and like one of those metal phones is just cold to the touch and this is still relatively room temperature. So that's just something, it honestly feels more premium than the price point suggests. So these are just my first impressions of the OnePlus Nord. There's a lot more to test, especially signal quality, uh, call quality, reception, signal strength, signal speed, because uh, I only, I've only been testing it in a more isolated uh, experience, so there's a lot more to learn and try out. And I think OnePlus has a real winner on their hands because it looks really good, it feels really good in the hand, uh, the user experience, like they said in their little booklet, is the specs don't really matter if the experience is good. And so far, the experience has been really good, except for that SIM card problem. But that's this is a European version. Maybe when it does come to the US, if it does come to the US, they'll hopefully have that all ironed out by then. Apart from that, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the full review of this OnePlus Nord. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more testing into it. And yeah, just stay tuned. Thanks for watching.